but again, I am the account manager over here for Benchmark and Don is our trainer and we are very excited to talk about personally my favorite product Moxie present just because I think it doesn't matter uh, the time of year, the type of market we're in, you can use this product to really connect and to build unique things for your clients. And it doesn't even have to be real estate related, which you're going to find out here. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. Don, feel free to take it away. Fantastic. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Philip. I really appreciate the introduction and I'm looking forward to showing you guys all about Moxie Present. Moxie Present is my favorite product that Moxie Works puts together. Um, and, and so I'm really excited to share it with you today. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about why you want to use Moxie Present. What's the big deal behind it? Um, I'm also then going to do a demo of a live presentation so you can see what all the fuss is about, what you would be showing to your customer, and, uh, and what those pages include. So what is included in the initial content. Uh, and then I'm going to go back through and show you kind of just the basics of getting started building that seller presentation. Um, we're also going to show you an additional presentation type. We have, um, we have four presentation types. I'm going to walk you through two of them today. And then we are going to look a little bit at some bonus stuff, and that is customizing your presentation. So that's what we are here today to show you. Um, and so let's just dive right into the why of it. Why do you want to use Moxie Present? Well, today we're going to be focusing specifically on a seller CMA, but Moxie Present is a premier presentation tool. So you can actually create any kind of presentation that you want, whether that includes listings or it doesn't. Um, so here are some just examples of ways that you can use Moxie Present, and that is, you know, go out and market yourself, drum up those leads um, by creating different kinds of presentations. Open house specifically is one that we talk a lot about either an open house invitation, or if you're hosting an open house, or even if you're hosting a virtual open house, we have a webinar on our help center that talks about how to host an open house uh, virtually through Moxie Present. Neighborhood tours. The neighborhoods are really where your bread and butter is. You know them, you know um, your subject matter expert in these areas. So go ahead and create a presentation that's all about that neighborhood. One of my favorite examples is actually, uh, we are based out of the Seattle area and one of our real estate agents here in Seattle went and created a presentation that was all about the microbreweries in one specific neighborhood in Seattle. Uh, and it ended up having the most interaction he's ever had on social media with that presentation. So he went and reviewed them. He put all that info in, nothing to do with listings, but he still had his marketing materials in. So he has also ended up with some referrals from that presentation, which has just been a really great boon to his business. Um, sphere marketing. I saw a question pop up before about being able to connect with all of your database, all of your sphere. And I'll show you how to email out and how to uh, post any presentation out to your group of people. Uh, but really being able to craft or create maybe a market snapshot of what's going on or um, an update during a house anniversary for somebody. It's been a year since they've been in their house or 10 years since they've been in their house. Creating that market report for them through present that you can then email out to them. So ways that you can connect and market to your sphere that peop those people that know, like, and trust you, you can connect with them through present. And then of course, a pre-listing packet. So anything that you might want to include that would help people understand why they should use you, especially those slides that you were just shown by Philip that show exactly what, how much of the market um, benchmark has. This is a fantastic way to be able to display that. Then we have um, ways that this actually works for you on a logistical standpoint. So we are tied directly to your MLS. We will know when listings come in. We will know when listings get updated. Maybe there's been a price change or a status update from active to pending. And generally in the, in the past, we've all gone out to the MLS to find our comparables and we've printed out a piece of paper to take with us to our customer. At least this is how my agent did it for me. And then by the time they met with me, they had to go and just double check the MLS one more time to see if anything had changed and reprint out documents. Well, we are connected live to your MLS. So any change that happens on the MLS side will automatically and digitally update. So you don't have to go look to see if anything is updated. We'll take care of that for you on the back end for the program. 
Um, there's also on the fly editing. So you'll see some of that in, in practice today and play today where I'll be showing you a presentation that I've built and then we're going to edit it and then you can see that it updates. Um, also, you can add in your own commentary, so your own guidance, your own expertise. There are places where you can add in that information built into the program. And then, of course, you can customize it to fit whatever you need. So you can add in additional pages, you can add in um, or remove whatever is not necessary for that specific customer. And then I skipped over easy to share, but I do want to mention you can email this. It's digital, so you can post it to social media. It's very, very easy to get out there in front of your people. So let's just take a quick second to talk about who is our audience. Right now, our audience, and this is just going to become more and more true, um, our audience is that millennial and younger generation. So those are our buyers. They make up the bulk of our buyers are that millennial and younger generation. Our sellers are making up, uh, the bulk of our sellers are gonna be that baby boomer or older generation. Uh, so you're wanting to be able to communicate and get people out in front, get your presentation out in front of the right people, get the right eyes on that presentation. So you wanna be able to show to your seller that you know how to attract that buyer by having this digital content. You also want to show to your, your buyer who is extremely adept and they've grown up with technology uh, that you know what you're doing and you have all of this information available at your fingertips to be able to provide them the insight and information that they need when they need it. But you also might have some traditionalists, even in both generational groups, you might have more traditional people that want to have uh, something they can hold and flip through with their, their, their hands, touch that. Um, we have a PDF that you can print out of the presentation. So you have both options available to you, but just know that the digital version of Moxie Present is interactive, it's dynamic, you can edit on the fly. But if you do need that tangible piece, you do have available uh, that available to you. And so some of the bonus content that I'm going to talk about today, and we'll talk about this towards the end of our presentation, but it is about adding in additional content, adding in media to set yourself apart from other agents. Uh, one of the biggest things that you can do to set yourself apart is to include video. And we know uh, I actually just looked this up again last week to see if it was still true. Over 500 million hours of YouTube videos are watched every day. People are living their lives in video, especially right now because we're not going outside to talk to each other. So uh, being able to connect with people via video is going to be a massive add to your presentations. And you can create videos that are either a neighborhood walkthrough, a property walkthrough, maybe you're doing a buyer tour, but your person can't come with you. So you take a video walkthrough of the property and send it to them so they can see what you're talking about. Um, or it's simply a put, you know, the, put the webcam on yourself and do an introduction video of yourself to your customer because you might not be able to have that face-to-face -face listing appointment and you still want to have kind of that face-to-face -face feel. So get your face in front of them. Um, so any ways uh, that you can add video into your presentation is just going to boost that, that interaction with you and the feeling of um, connection from your person. Additionally, you can add in websites to your presentation. So because the digital version of your presentation is actually going to be a website itself, you're building a website, you can add in live web content. Right now, the example on your screen is showing you that we have a walk score page. Walkability of a neighborhood might be really important to somebody when they're looking to purchase a place. So you could add in a walk score website to your presentation. And what makes this good instead of just a link is that you can actually embed it into your website or into your presentation and people can navigate within that. So I could scroll through, click on things and never leave the Moxie present presentation to go to this other website and then kind of go down the rabbit hole, get lost and not come back to the presentation. Uh, you can just stay in the presentation and then scroll on to the next piece of information. So it's a really great way for you to add in that additional info whatever website that that might be so that you provide that to your person. 
So we're going to next go and show you what I've been talking about. We're going to look at a live presentation and then we're going to go through the basics that you're seeing here on your screen, creating that seller presentation and creating a buyer tour. Those are the two presentation types I want to show you today. And then hopefully we'll have some time to do some bonus stuff and look at adding video and adding websites. <clears throat> but before I go and show you any of that, I have mentioned that we had a webinar that you could go look at our, on our help center. Well, let me talk a little bit about our help center. Down in the bottom right hand corner of any screen in the MoxieWorks universe, the MoxieWorks platform, and this would be Engage as was mentioned earlier, or Present, you'll be able to find a pink help button in the bottom right hand corner. That pink help button will allow you to find different help articles and short video tutorials that'll take you through anything that I'm going to talk about today, as well as previously recorded webinars. And then if you want to talk with one of our support reps, uh, our support agents, because we are based in Seattle, we are open and available 830 to 5 Pacific time, Monday through Friday. There is an option for you to schedule a call with us if you want to speak with somebody live, or you can use a chat feature, which is built into that pink button to be able to just ask your question really quickly. So um, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team. Uh, they are an amazing group of people and ready to help in any question that you might have pertaining to Moxie Works. Uh, so let me go ahead and jump back over to present. And here we go. So we are on the present Moxie Present homepage. This is going to show you all of your presentations that you have ever created or will ever create. They are going to be living here. Uh, I want to walk you through a presentation that I've already created. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this first one. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And what this is going to do is actually load up the presentation and it's going to, you might have seen, let me go ahead and refresh that again. You might see that it's showing you a little circle that's calculating percentage of creating your presentation. That is the action of going out to the MLS and finding out if there's been any update and also coming back to my own Moxie Present account to see if I've made any changes or edits to that presentation itself. So anytime you open up this presentation, it will always be the most recent, most current version of that information. So let me just kind of put it to you this way. Let's say you create a listing presentation today and that person isn't ready to move forward with going ahead and selling their property, but three or four months from now, six months from now, a year from now, they come back to you and say, hey, I'm really interested in looking at that information again you don't have to resend it to them. They can still just open up that link that they had before, click on that link, open it up, and they will see the most current version of the info and of the comparables. Now you might wanna go in and update any comparables to what might be available and on the market now, but just think about how you can get there. Um, we'll be showing you how to get to present in, uh, in just a little bit, but I, I do want to uh, show what the presentation looks like without anybody trying to follow along by clicking on anything. So go ahead and sit back, relax, and uh, watch the presentation here, and then we'll show you how to get to present. Uh, so in order to get through your presentation, if you're on a desktop or a laptop, you can just use your mouse to scroll down, or if you're on a mobile device, you can use your hand to swipe up to get to the next screen. Here we land on our uh, cover page, which has our title, also has our uh, agent photograph and benchmark realty branding on here, as well as the location, the address of your property. You can update some of the information on this page. You can change out the photo. You can change out the title. You can choose whether or not to show your photo or, or even the uh, brokerage branding. So you have some control over what is displayed on this page. And then we'll continue scrolling down to get to our property summary. Property summary is going to be driven by information you add into the program. So the more you add in, the more meaningful this will be for your customers. So they'll see a lot more information, a lot more detail. Uh, but if you choose not to add in, say, MLS area or schools or tax information, we'll simply remove those fields and not display them at all instead of showing an empty field. So only the information you plug in will be displayed on this screen. Next screen is our listing location map. This is showing us our comparables that we've selected. The map itself is showing you the location of those comparables, but also they're color coded. And the color coding is based on status of the listing. So green is going to be your active properties. Yellow are going to be your pending properties. 
red are your sold and anything that doesn't fall into active pending or sold will be in the other or gray category um, other will be things like off market or expired or canceled those kinds of statuses that don't fit into active pending or sold if you click on any one of the items on or any one of the tabs on the map you might notice that this the carousel it's not moving too much but if i click again you might notice that the carousel shifts of images at the top here and that's simply trying to highlight which comparable you are clicking on from the map down and below and if you want to dive into more detail you simply click on the image itself and it will open up the listing details, which allows us to click into a future into a larger photo gallery if we want to, giving you nice, beautiful, large images to flip through. Or we can scroll down and view more information about the features. And then what I want to highlight is this comments section here. There are many places where you can add in your own guidance and commentary, and this is one of them. So you can go in and add edit the remarks, uh, and this is where that edit remarks section will show up. So I'll show you where to put that in, but just know you can add in some additional commentary to give more guidance and information, and it'll show up here in the comment section of your listings. Let's scroll down to the next page. This is what we like to call kind of our Pinterest or card view <clears throat> page. Um, this is showing us all of the same information we were just looking at, but it's showing it all on just the individual card. So we're not having to dive any further into that info to, to, inf to identify the information. I don't know why I got tripped up on that, uh, but you can see right on the card, you have the um, status of your properties listed right there. Um, and you'll be able to dive into the listing detail should you wish to. Then we come to our side-by-side -side comparisons. And this is that apples to apples comparison sheet that is gonna be talking about how does the subject property stack up to the other comparables in the area. Um, you'll notice that not every comparable that I selected is displayed on this screen. So in the upper right hand corner, there is an arrow that allows you to click on that and it'll scroll through the next set of comparables. The apples to apples comparison goes right across the screen on each individual line. And this is another place where you can edit and identify what makes the most sense to include. So maybe there are some features you want to include. Maybe there are some features you, you don't have a need for, like this new construction. The property that is my subject property is new construction. The rest are not. Is that really an important feature to include in the side-by-side -side comparison? So you can really identify and customize what you want to include on this page. Then we'll scroll to the status comparison or what I like to call the number cruncher screen. This is showing us everything that we've been looking at already, but it's showing it just in the numbers. So everybody takes in information differently, but also everybody needs to see that information in more than one way. So at least three different ways to be able to identify and understand what they're looking at. Um, so we've provided you multiple ways for you to explain the information as far as what comparables are telling us uh, to help identify how you should list the property. Um, this is showing it to us in just the numbers. So we still have all of our comparable imagery over on the left hand side, uh, but all the numbers are then grouped together. And on this screen, they're grouped together by status type. Um, so you can actually alter what order you want the statuses to show up in. On previous screens, you can sort the order of the actual individual uh, comparables, but on this screen, they're grouped together by statuses. So if you wanted the sold status to show up first, we can do that. You can change that information and you can do that on a per, um, a per presentation basis. So maybe it makes sense on one presentation, but not on another. You can have that custom per presentation. Then we get to our listing averages screen. This is showing us uh, through a bar graph exactly what's going on with all the comparables we've selected. What's the low average, median, and high pricing. Um, and this, this is also one where we can say, you know what, I want to look at and focus on just the sold. So I'm going to go up to the tabs at the top of my screen and I'm going to toggle off active. I'm going to toggle off pending and also other. And you'll notice every time I turn one of these off, you'll be able to see the percentages change and the bar graph change. So this is exactly showing us all the information that we need 
for each individual status type. But we can also say, okay, well, what's, uh, what's pending and sold doing together? So you can really craft the story and, and show off what's gonna, uh, what you need to show off for your specific situation. Then we get to uh, one of our scatter graphs. Uh, this scatter graph is looking at price and days on market. So generally, the longer a property is on the market, the lower the price will be. Um, the trend line is indicating that, but we do have one outlier of an active property up there in the upper right hand corner. And you can hover over the dots on the screen to see what property is impacting the graph. Uh, so this one has been on the market 144 days and still up there in price. We don't know if it's actually come down itself in price, uh, but as far as the comparables I selected, it's still the highest of all of them. But you can hover over uh, the dots to see what is impacting the, the graph, which property is impacting the graph. And again, just like the previous screen, we can turn off any of these status types to focus in a little bit more on specific information. Then we get to the second of our two scatter graphs, and this is looking at price and size. Generally, the larger the property, the more expensive it's going to be. And the trend line is showing that as well. Same rules apply as the last screen. Hover over the dot to see which one is impacting the graph. And if you want to turn any of the dots off, you can toggle off the status type at the top here. And then we get to our estimate comparison. This is one of those screens we've put in here because many questions come in um, many times where someone will say, but Zillow said my estimate is worth, my house is worth this. There's estimate said my house is worth this. And that's a part of the conversation that we have. Um, so what this screen is showing you is actually what this estimate was and then what the actual sold price was. So you'd be able to indicate that the estimate is fairly close um, but what's going on in the market today, what's going on right now, and use your expertise to kind of drive that conversation. And in this example, this estimate is on average about 5% under what properties are actually selling for. I've seen this number be vastly uh, off by 50% or more, uh, or dead on at 0%. So it really depends on what the market is doing at any given moment. And this allows you to have that conversation with your customer. This is looking again, only at the sold comparables, the sold listings. And then we get to our pricing analysis. This is where you can plug in what the uh, approximated market value is, where you'd want to list the property. And then down below at the bottom is your pricing stat section. This pricing stat section is actually generated completely by the system. And it's pulling the information based on the sold comparables you select. So the sold comparables you select will then drive the information that's displayed here by looking at what is the average price per square footage on your sold comparables, taking that price per square footage and applying it to the square footage of your subject property. So right now we've got the average price per square footage of all of our sold comparables is $294. We'll apply that to the 4,800 square feet of our property and come up with the 1.4 million as the list price or suggested list price. This is all uh, dictated by the system uh, and all pulled from the sold comparables you select. So it helps you, again, having that conversation about what's going on in the, in the market and where should we list your property based on the needs of your customer. This is also a section where uh, right up above pricing stats, you'll be able to enter in some of your own guidance and commentary. So there's a place that you can plug in some remarks that will help drive the conversation and provide some insight for your customer on this page. Then we get to that other big question of how much money am I going to walk away from with this sale? And depending on your customer, if they're a brand new seller, they've never sold a house before, it's the first time they're doing that, they may not know that there are some costs involved in selling a property. The net proceeds sheets allows you to break down those costs. What are the taxes? What are the fees? Uh, what are the escrow costs? Um, maybe repairs. And you can run up to three scenarios total for your customer. So maybe you want to come out with a uh, as is, what do we list this property as is? Or if you wanted to add in a, um, if we updated the kitchen or we did some work in the landscaping, where could we update this price to? Uh, I've also seen agents use this as a way to work out the numbers when they've received an offer. Um, so if you have net proceeds come in, you can, instead of the selling price uh, that you want to list the property at, you could plug in the offer price and break down the cost for your customer. So they really have an idea and understanding of what they will walk away with. So it's a great way to use the net proceeds. And again, you can have up to three proceed sheets. 
And then we end with our agent profile. So here we have Gus's awesome picture and we could add in a bio for him and that biography information would also display on this page. So let me jump up to our cover page and to do that in the bottom right hand corner, there's some arrows and also a three line uh, button here. The arrows allow us to jump through each page instead of having to scroll or swipe. And this three line button will allow us to view our table of contents and we can actually just jump to whatever page we need. This is helpful when you're uh, in face to face with your customer and you're wanting to focus in on specific elements of your presentation and the rest is for them to kind of peruse on their own time. Um, so just know that you can jump to any page you want with this three line button opens up that table of contents. So I'm going to show you how I built that. We'll come back to presents dashboard. Excuse me, <clears throat> take a sip of water there. Um, as you log in to your, um, into the Benchmark Realty, uh, benchmarktools.com website, uh, there will be, and Cody, maybe you can jump in and say this as well and confirm this. Um, after you get your invitations, there will be a present link at the top here in this gray bar. It's not showing right now, but you will see that uh, later today, Cody. That is, that is correct. And Philip had answered someone else with that. We are planning for noon their time to have uh, those emails go out in that present button in what we call the Moxie bar will be available. You got it. Perfect. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll be able to jump between engage and present and any other uh, piece that's available up here in your navigation bar. So once you click on present, you'll be brought to this home page. And when you want to create a brand new presentation, you'll just go up to that blue bar, uh, that blue create new button in the upper right corner. We'll click on that create new and we'll be taken through the steps to creating a brand new presentation. First thing it's going to ask us is what kind of presentation I had mentioned earlier that we had four presentation types today. I'm going to cover two of them, but let me talk you to you about what those presentation types are. First one is a buyer presentation. That buyer presentation is there for when you have a buyer, you're representing the buyer and you're going to make an offer on a property. This will help you identify what's the best offer or help provide your customer with some insight into what the best offer might be by selecting the comparables for that area. And then there's also a mortgage and closing cost calculation sheet in there that helps kind of drive home what are the costs in purchase, purchasing this particular property. So you have that option there. Seller presentation is what we're focusing on today. What I just showed you, that basic seller CMA that you are all very comfortable and, and knowledgeable about creating uh, all the time. Buyer tour will allow you to create just what you, what it sounds like, um, a collection of properties that you might go visit with your customer. Now you might be doing that virtually in case, in that case, you can still create a buyer tour here and then provide some video content where you walk people through those actual uh, properties and then send it to them so that they can see that themselves. And then we have a non-listing presentation type, and this would fit into that category where uh, the real estate agent I was mentioning earlier that created a, a microbrewery tour and review, he used the non-listing presentation type and then just added some marketing materials. So it was still, um, people were still aware that he was in the business and he was still um, uh, selling real estate. So those are the different types of property, I'm sorry, of presentation types that we have here. Seller is the one that we are going to be focusing on right now, and we'll click continue. You then have a couple of options for templates. The templates are what drive all the pages I just showed you. The templates will dictate what order those pages are in, what pages are included, and any of the editing options that I mentioned, those are built into templates as well. So if you have choices that you have made uh, about what features are going to show up on the side-by-side -side comparison page, you can craft your own template to make sure that those features are always available to you and you don't have to go back and rethink about them uh, and reset them every single time you create a presentation. So I just want to mention here, this is where you grab your template. Your broker just provided you a couple of templates to work with, a default template with company pages, company facts and sheets, facts and stats, excuse me. Um, so you can see that this is also available to use or the default seller that I just showed you with uh, the straight 13 pages that Moxieworks provides. So either one that you select 
hit continue and then give this a name. Um, so this is just example here. Choose your listing source and you can also choose your office. So if you happen to be a member of multiple offices, you can choose which office you want to have displayed for this specific uh, presentation. And once you're done doing all that, you'll hit create and it will land you on what we call the subject property screen. I'm going to go ahead and close this though because I want to edit the one that I have just shown you. So I'll go up to my edit button. This is also going to land us on the subject property screen. So same place you would land if you hit create. Um, from this screen, you're going to enter in the details for your subject property for the listing that this presentation is regarding. Um, so you want to give it a, an address. And if I scroll down a little bit further under subject property info, you'll also want to include beds, baths, and square footage. And the reason for that is our search screen is going to try and provide to you a set of comparables that match similarly to your subject property. And it's going to use this detail in order to do that. So it'll look for the location and within a, a boundary of about a quarter mile, it will then look for properties that have similar size of beds, baths, and square footage. If you are creating a presentation, let's say for an open house, you already have that listing on the MLS. Instead of having to retype all that information, you can actually enter in the MLS number in this top box, click copy, and it will populate everything. We'll pull it in, copy it from the MLS, and then fill in the blanks for you so you don't have to retype it all. Once you've entered in your information for your listing, hit continue, and this will bring you to your search screen. The search screen has a lot of options in it, so I'm just going to go over the top basics for you um, so that you can get going with it and get uh, working with it. But know that you have many, many filter options and boundary options and searching by um, MLS number, so I'll just mention a few here. The properties that will be displayed to you will have based on your subject property, an initial group of properties over on the map on the right hand side. The map will show you the same color coding that I showed you on your presentation. So green active, yellow pending, red sold, gray is other. We are showing you properties in a geographical area. So if you're not seeing a property that you expect to see based on where we're at on the map, you might wanna move the map a little bit because the street might be being cut off or you wanna zoom out on it so you can see a broader area. So just kind of yep. keep that in mind. And uh, I did we, just wanna interrupt with that because we had two questions coming right at the same time with the search area. So I did just absolutely. wanna highlight that, what you said over there. If what you're not seeing is on that map, then you can decrease um, if you scroll your down a little bit you can see that minus button to help you kind of zoom out to grab that wider radius so didn't mean to interrupt you there but thought it was a great time just to answer that live that's perfect time to answer that question absolutely so yes we start with about a quarter mile radius um, now that's just a, a general uh, quarter mile if there might not be a, a property that we see right away uh, the, the system will actually zoom out a little bit further so it sees some properties. So you might see sometimes where it's broader than a quarter mile, but that's where we kind of start with. Uh, and then all the images or all the, the listings that are visible on the map itself in that geographical area being displayed by the map will then display in the list to the left. If you want to add in a property, it's as simple as hovering over the image and clicking on the plus icon and you'll get a check mark which says that this has now been added to your presentation. There's also a details link that allows you to open up further details about the property if you're wanting to dig a little bit deeper and understand that property more. And uh, additionally, we have different boundary options. So on the map itself, you'll notice that there's a, a bar here that says schools, draw, and radius. These are three boundary options that you can use to help narrow or define your search area a little bit more. Radius is just what it sounds like. You click on that and you can actually draw us a radius and run your search and it will then only search for properties within that boundary mark. Same thing goes for your draw tool. This allows you to draw your own custom area, whether that be um, the, we have a quick draw option, which allows you to kind of just draw your own circle or this multi-draw option, which I love because it allows you to get really specific about what streets you want to, to encompass. And then again, it will only show listings within that area. And then we have a school 
uh, boundary here and let me exit out of this boundary so I can just show you uh, if we click on schools you can then click on public schools and what will happen is icons will show up on your map that will display kind of a green mortar board um, the the graduation cap that we all know and love and then you can look for um, school boundaries so school attendance zone boundaries uh, so once you've done those searches, also know that if you are looking for something more specific than the features we have, um, so let's say you've plugged in a price range, you've adjusted your bedrooms and bathrooms, or maybe you want to look for something that has two bathrooms instead of four uh, to be able to find more properties available. And we have different filters under this drop down menu to help expand or narrow your focus of wh what you're looking for. If you're wanting to find something, though, that is more hyper-local to your area, a hyper-specific type of property you're looking for, you will have many, many more options on your MLS for finding and focusing in on those specific properties. Um, and that's fine because you're using uh, my, uh, Moxie Present to present your information. Uh, so if you're wanting something hyper-local like a house with a blue door that's facing north, find that on your MLS and then you can grab the MLS number and just toggle over to our MLS search, type in that number. And as you're doing that, Don, I will note that um, we had Mr. Ron Burgundy and then Shannon kind of asking the same thing. Can you add your own? So you are highlighting the fact that if you go to the MLS button, as opposed to the location, you can add in those separate MLS numbers, you can add in as many as you want, as long as you follow those by a comma. But the one thing I wanted to interrupt you on that um, some of the agents might not be aware of that you do have to add that RTC, those three letters before you actually input the number that might be new or unique to some of you agents out there. But just know that in order to find it in our system, just make sure you add that RTC before. That's a great question. Um, yeah, so we do have that RTC that comes in on the MLS feed from your MLS. So that's how we would search for your for the different properties. And absolutely, you can plug in exactly the listings that you're wanting to include. So if you already know which listings you want to add in, definitely you can skip the searching and the filters and just plug in the MLS numbers in order to add those listings. Um, there's another question I saw about uh, being able to search by subdivision. If your subdivision is searchable via Google Maps, then yes, you can search by subdivision. So, so basic boundaries that you can find on a Google Maps search, you can also find on the search within Present. And going hand in hand with that on as far as land sales, um, I do believe we have that in the filter, but just double check on that if you don't mind. Um, so yes, there is land available as well. And that was for Susan's question there. So, okay, thank you. Absolutely. So then once we've selected our listings, we'll go over to our listings panel where we can then sort them. So I mentioned that you can have them in a sort order on your presentation. Um, you can also display, uh, have a certain sort order for where we group the listings by status. All of that's taken care of here on the listings page. So we have our display order right at the top. Um, the first one is showing us all of the statuses together so I can click on the edit icon here, the little pencil icon. We can then just drag and drop the order we want. So I'm going to move sold up to the top, click on save, and then that will display in my presentation. I can then change the sort order here in my drop down menu. Right now it's price high to low, but maybe I want it to be distance from my subject property. So now I have uh, properties in that order, but I also have a secondary level of sorting, this little plus sign here, I can actually now also sort high to low pricing within that distance from my uh, subject property um, or status type or whatever that might be. So you can really set up what your sort order is going to be for your listings. And the last thing I want to show you on this page, I want to mention that you can add in custom comparables if you need to. So maybe you have a for sale by owner you want to add in. You can definitely do that. If you need to add uh, monetary adjustments to a listing because it doesn't quite fit your subject property, you can do that. Um, and this edit remarks button right below the image of every one of your comparable properties, there's an edit remarks button. I'm gonna click on that and this is where you can add in your own guidance and commentary on the individual listings. Um, this is the information we're getting from the listing agent. You're not trying to sell this property, you're using it as a comparable for information. So you could remove this info if you wanted to and add in your own or if you're uncomfortable removing it, just go um, enter in a few spaces and put in your own remarks.
down below. And then we'll jump to estimate screen. Um, so on the estimate screen, this is where we're going to plug in that estimated mark market value, where we want to list the property. Uh, we can see the pricing stats that are going to display to our customer right over here on the left. So this is looking at all the sole comparables we selected and giving us that price per square footage and applying that to the square footage of our subject property. Um, so that is showing right over here so that you can kind of identify, do I need to go back and make some adjustments? And then again, you can put in your own remarks right underneath this area and it will show on that screen for your customer. This is also the screen, uh, the tab, where we have an additional tab for net proceeds. So I'm going to click on that so you can see what that form looks like. You can enter in what's going to be applicable to your person. So where do we want to enter in? What numbers do we need to enter in? And again, you can run up to three total scenarios. So we have many fields available for you. If we don't have a field that you need, we have a custom cost section at the bottom and you can add as many custom costs as necessary. If you want to run that additional a net proceeds sheet, there's a copy button at the top that'll simply do what it says. It'll copy over the information you've just plugged in, and then you can go in and update that info based on maybe the new, um, new offer you have received or um, new adjustments. And you know, if you put in a little bit of money for paint or uh, replenishing the cabinetry in your bathroom, what does that then look like as far as where we can list the property? And then finally, we get to our pages tab. Now, when we created our presentation, we selected a template. So at this point in time, we are done. We do not need to do anything else. So those first four pages are subject property. We searched for comparables. We made some adjustments to our comparables as needed and added in our commentary. We then created our estimate. Those are things that you guys are comfortable with on a day-to-day -day basis already in your business. And we wanted to make it as easy to create that as possible. This is where we then create our presentation. And because we selected a template at the beginning, our, our presentation is already built out for us. And at this time, all we need to do is click on the send icon up above, click on send, It'll open up this email presentation window and we can now type in a person's name or email address because you've already received engage. This is where engage comes into play and you can actually send a presentation to a group of people that you have in your engage account or an individual person you have in your engage account. And this presentation will automatically be associated and in, in the archive of activity for those people. Um, so you'll be able to go back and take a look at what's going on um, in the history for your people in Engage. Uh, so this is a great way if, you want, if you're wanting to do sphere marketing, just kind of think of that. If you're wanting to do sphere marketing and you create this great presentation, have a group of people you're wanting to send that to and then you can just type in the group name. And I think I actually have a Moxie group in this. So here we have MoxieWorks. This is going to go to Cody and myself and then uh, be able to send this out to both of us. We'll each in receive it as if it was sent individually to us. So it's a great way for you to connect with all your people using Engage. Um, but this is where you enter in your email address, subject line, and then your message to your person and then they will receive your presentation. If we come back to our presentation, it's been sitting open and I refresh this, you'll then see if I get to, I'm gonna to jump to our number cruncher screen here. So you can see the update that was done essentially while we were on the fly. Here we have our number country screen and you can see that my solds are now at the top. So that was one of the changes that I made and you can see that live and in action. So that's the basics of creating a seller presentation. I wanna quickly go through uh, the basics of creating a buyer presentation, but I do wanna just check with Philip and Cody on our time. I know we have an hour together, but I wanna make sure that we're still okay on that. Yes, we've got, a, got another 30 minutes to go if you wanna just have at it and oh. answer questions and have fun. Perfect. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. So we're going to create a buyer tour. This is the, the tour that you would want to then take your person on or give to them so they can drive through and see the different properties in order to connect with, um, you know, what properties they might want to purchase. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on create new. 
and then I'm going to click on buyer tour. By our tour as our presentation type, we're then going to select our template. I'm going to actually grab this default template with company pages and we'll go ahead and hit continue. And then I'm just going to use this as really great naming here, buyer tour example and create. This is going to land us on our first page and this first page is basically asking us for the title of our presentation and there's also an additional interix drive time drop down here so i'll click on the plus sign here what this is asking for is our commute address commuting is probably the biggest identifier of where you're going to find a property and in this time and place that we are in the world commuting is less as important as it used to be uh, because we're all working from home or many of us are working from home, but you might still need to have um, a workplace that you're going into or a school that you're commuting to. So the, the commute address is here for you to then be able to tell your people what the commute timing is going to be. We'll jump over to our search screen, which is where we're going to then start looking for properties. Now you'll see that my map is showing Seattle on the map. That's for two reasons. One, that's where I'm located and where the MoxieWorks headquarters is. Uh, but also, we don't know where you're searching yet. So we have to put something up here for you. And so we use the MoxieWorks headquarters as our, um, as kind of our starting point here. So I'm going to then plug in uh, an area. So I want to look around Seaboard Lane. And we'll just search. So what that's going to do is then uh, zoom in on that area of the map and then look for properties. We then want to plug in some additional property information. What is our person looking for? Well, there is quite a bit of inventory right here, is like, at least from the MLS, and that includes sold and um, other types of properties. So I'm going to go ahead and narrow down my focus, uh, let's say, to... this area hit apply and see if that will then zoom in our focus which it does i then also want to only look at active properties so i'm going to drop down my filter i'm going to uncheck sold and i'm going to uncheck all other type of properties and hit apply and of course if your customer has some needs as far as beds and baths or square footage or any other features that they're looking for you can plug those into the filters in order to identify those properties um, so maybe we want to plug that in i want to have at least three bedrooms and only two baths because i don't want to clean that many bathrooms um, and that will also continue to narrow down our focus at this point, you will then select co some comparables. And again, you might have some comparables or properties that you've already found on the MLS. You can go ahead and just, uh, same as before, click on MLS number up at the top here, this toggle button, and be able to uh, clack in those numbers to find just what you're looking for or add in just what you're looking for. So we're going to go through and I'm actually just going to select the first few properties here as my example and we'll jump over to our listings page listings page is also going to be where we can enter in remarks so remarks are going to be um, a great way for you to identify some additional features or uh, why you selected this property why you thought it would be a good fit for your customer um, maybe this is a perfect property but it's right next to a toxic waste dump and so you want to be able to call that out for your person that's where you'd want to enter in remarks you'll notice over also on the right hand side on this particular type of presentation we include a map on our listings page this map also has our properties in a specific order well they kind of look like they're in the right order but number one is coming after number three and that's just no no way to backtrack and go through and visit these properties so i'm going to click on change order and then this is a simple drag and drop so i actually want number one to come second and number three to drop down There we go, we're getting them in the right order and that looks like it might be pretty close, maybe four and five get swapped, um, but then six and seven are in the right order. So now we would know, okay, to see these seven properties, we're just gonna make a big C through, through the city here and we'll hit on save order. And then this is what will then be provided to your customer. 
We'll then go to pages. And again, because I grabbed a template, I have all of my pages over on the left-hand side already set up and ready to go for me. And I don't need to make any other adjustments here. So I'm going to go ahead and view my presentation right from this screen. I'll click on view and go to web, but also notice that you have the PDF versions as well. So for those customers that need the PDF version, you have that available. We'll click on web and this is going to open up our presentation, build it for us. And then we can swipe down or swipe up, excuse me, scroll down or swipe up to start our presentation. The listing location map is going to be the most important piece. Uh, this is where your people are going to start with their tour and they can click on the image of the property to see the, the different information. On this listing details page, this is again where you can plug in your own commentary and guidance under comments. But at the top, the really cool thing that I want to show you about the buyer tour is this review section. And because this is digital, and your person can have this on their phone instead of um, having to bring along a clipboard and paper and pencil or pen to be able to write down what their thoughts are on each property. They can actually just clack it into their phone because this is mobile responsive. We can click on add review, give this a star rating, put in notes. It also helps your person who might be seeing multiple properties kind of keep things uh, in focus for themselves. Um, and then not only do they get to go back and look at their own reviews, but you as the agent will receive a ping. You'll receive an email that then says your person has just added in a review for this presentation. You want to go take a look at that and you'll be able to see that. We've seen this in action when we could go out in the world and talk to each other face to face. Uh, we've seen this in action where an agent was on a buyer tour with their person. They went and stopped and visited the first house. Really great conversation, great reviews while they were in the house. And then everybody got back in their cars and was headed to the next place. And a review came in and the review said, this was the perfect location, great styling of house, right, the right style, but it's just not big enough for our family. And so that agent was able to get that, see that that came in, read the review and was able to call them and say, you know what? I just saw the review. The second home is actually about the same size. So let's skip that and move on to the third home in order to take care of what's actually of need for you. So we'll just skip viewing that second home. So they were able to in real time be able to adjust what they were doing in the day because of this review section. So it's a really great ad. Now, in order to send your presentation to your person, you do need to use the send email function because to add in those reviews, we're going to ask your person to confirm their email address. So you do need to email this to them um, and not just give them the link to it. You do need to send this to them via the email presentation function here. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're wanting to create a different kind of presentation or like a seller presentation or a non-listing uh, microbrewery tour <laughs> presentation, right at the top, you can just grab the URL here, this web address, copy that and paste it to your social media so everybody can look at it. Um, so the only one where you do need to email is that buyer tour so that we can confirm email address to add reviews. We don't want a bunch of people adding reviews uh, willy nilly for you so that you get overwhelmed with that. So we've shown you the basics for creating a seller presentation and a buyer tour. What I do want to do next, though, is show you some bonus stuff that you can do to customize your presentations, things that are going to take it to that next level. So I want to show you how to add in a video to your presentations. I'm actually going to go in and edit the video for our seller presentation or edit the presentation here. So I've opened that up, hit edit. I'm going to jump to my pages screen. And let's talk a little bit about how to customize your presentation. All the pages you can see are lined up over here on the left hand column. If you want to change the order of uh, where the pages land, you can do that simply by clicking on the page and dragging and dropping it where you want it to be. This then updates that for your presentation. If I were to go back out there and refresh the one I have open, it would show the new order. You'll also notice that there are some with a little pencil icon on them. Not every one of them has a pencil icon, like the property summary does not, but the side-by-side -side comparison certainly does. And this is where you can come in, click on edit, and you'll have a side panel pop out with all of the features that are being displayed. 
And I think it was new build that I wanted to see if I could take off. Um, so you could go in and decide and select which of these features you want to have included. So new construction, I'll just remove that. It's not necessary. So you can uh, pick and choose which features you want to have compared. When you close this, it'll refresh this and that information will disappear. If you then like the order in which you've created the pages and you like the settings you have updated, down at the bottom of the list of, image, uh, list of pages is save as template. So we can click on save as template. We can then save our own template here. There we go. And then save this. And now when I go to create a presentation in the future, I can select my template, which has all the order of pages that I like and the settings that I have chosen for my presentation. So new construction will not show up in that next version and that next presentation down the line. I can go in and add additional pages as well. So at the top of the, of the list, I can click on add page and I can go to my library. So if I click on library, you'll then notice that I've got not only the MoxieWorks report pages, these are all the pages that are generated by the presentation or by the system, but I also have a brokerage pages section. This brokerage pages section is going to allow you to see all of the pages that the brokerage provides. So here we have the 2020 stats and we can go in and look at that page. And so we can see what that includes and we can go in and click on add this now automatically adds it to our presentation and we can jump back to our presentation and that 2020 stats and facts page has now been included and we can drag it to wherever we want it to be. I can now also create my own custom content. So I'll hit add page and click create new. And if you have content already that's in PDF form, you can upload that here. But what I want to show you is the build page. And that's because the build page is going to be mobile responsive. We have many layouts available for you. You can have a full page layout or a broken out columns with a header, um, whatever layout you're wanting. I'll click create. And then each one of the boxes that you have selected from that layout will have its own options available. So we could select to add in text, pretty straightforward, click on text. You have a uh, text editor here available for you. If you want to add in an image, click on image, and then you can either select from a library of ones that you've already uploaded or upload from your computer. Video allows you to add in the link from a streaming site. You cannot upload video into your presentation, but you can copy over from a streaming site and it's as simple as copy paste. So I'm actually going to show you how to do that right now. I've clicked on video. It's opened up the side panel. I'm then going to go over to YouTube where I have this beautiful benchmark 2020 promo available. And there's a share button down here underneath the video. So under the video, I'll click on share. I'll just copy that first URL that pops up, come back to my page that I'm editing and paste this in, click add, and then it's going to fill up the box that I've selected. So imagine if you selected the full page layout, that video would then be full page for your presentation. And then the last button that you have is this more button and it is just what it sounds like. It offers you more options. Um, so if we click on that, you'll then see a bigger editor you can still add in video right here from the YouTube link. You can also add in the web page that I was mentioning. So here I have a little world icon. I can click on the world icon and add in a page. So I also have a website, the Benchmark Realty Tennessee website. I'll copy that page and I'm going to paste in the URL. Now I want this to be 100% across. And let's say I want it about 800 pixels high. I'll enable the scroll bar and all of this information because it's bonus that I'm showing you. You don't have to do any of this that I'm showing you, but if you do want to go back and, and rewatch this video, or if you want to go to um, our help center to find out how to do this, there is a help article that lists all of this out for you. I'll then hit OK and you'll see a little frame button show up here. That means that that website is now in my page. One last thing that I wanted to show you under the more drop down option is templates. This templates button allows you to create 
both uh, text and imagery together in one square, but also keep it responsive. So we already have mobile ready layouts available for you so that you can copy in text and change out the photograph. Uh, we even have full page options down here at the bottom of the list. So just kind of keep that in mind that you have that available. I'm gonna go ahead and save this page and we'll just call this benchmark. And I'm going to say that this is media. Um, I like to label my or describe my pages so that they're easy to spot in my library. So I know if it's a video or if it's a web page or if it's custom text. Um, so I'm just going to call this media because it's multiple types of media. And we'll save that. And then we'll go ahead and close this out. I'll let it update here. Got a little close happy. Um, and now you can see that the page has been updated and added to our presentation. I'm now going to go back and refresh my page. And we'll jump up to the cover page. So I'm going to click on my table of contents, go to my cover page. I'll scroll down and you can see that 2020 stats and facts page that I added. And then we come to our custom page with the video and the website. Now the website, I can see I'm scrolling right through. It has already been mobile responsive within my page. I can click around on it if I wish to. It's a live website and the video is live and playable from within my website as well. So you don't have to leave your presentation in order to see that content. So we went through quite a bit of info there. Those are a little few bonus things at the end and don't hesitate to click on that pink help button in the bottom right corner to see exactly how to do what I just showed you. But what I want to take some time with now here is Cody, any questions that have come in, anything that we want to uh, go back over or anything that you would like me to, to show off again? Let me just start with the questions. And um, if anyone does have any last minute, just go ahead and throw those in that Q and A box. Mike had asked early on, how often does it update from the MLS? And I think that's a great question in a couple contexts. If you are sending this as a live web presentation, as you've noticed from Dawn, whenever she's opening it up, it does have that loading bar. And that's exactly it. It's going back and trying to reload any updates you've made to that presentation, any updates that have been made to the properties you're using. So that's one side of it. And same with when you go in to edit your presentation, same thing, look for comparables are trying to update with any new information that we've gathered since you've gone back in there. Darren had another comment about or question in the comment section. So this has to do with you being able to edit the comments on a listing. Does it automatically default to the description coming from the MLS listing? And that I'm, uh, I'm not really sure. It, it should just pick up any of those additional comments that are coming through the MLS that we're receiving. And yeah, by you up. Go yes, I think, I think that that's exactly it. So oh, if I click on edit comments, it's defaulting to what has been added by the listing agent from the actual listing on the MLS. So it will automatically display that, but you are then able to go in and either edit that, remove it, or add your own comments to it. But yes, it is the, the listing comments from that listing agent. Yep. And it only speaks one way too. So by you changing it there, it's not going to go back to the MLS, just allows you to personalize it for your presentation. Um, Charles had a good question about account access. Is it possible for more than one agent to log into a particular Moxie account? Um, and this kind of goes for overall with Moxie. And you do have the ability as an agent, you can give people uh, account access. If you want them and you're okay with them coming in, they would have the ability to um, use any of the products that you have. So whether it's another agent or maybe your assistant, there is a way and we have a support article on account settings. Um, so that's one way, but if you're looking for it particularly for presentations, we do have the ability for you to share presentations or collaborate with team presentations as well. Um, Steve had asked, does the system take into account upgrades to the home, such as let's say a new roof, new AC unit, when it's figuring out the price for the buyer presentation? And so that one, um, that's a good question. We, as far as the calculation goes, don't necessarily have that um, equation to pick up on that. But if Dawn goes into a presentation, she can show you how you as the agent can add in those adjustments to make sure your buyer or seller knows exactly what's going on with that comparable as Dawn's Absolutely. showing you now. 
Yeah, so we're only pulling the information that's specifically off of the MLS. So if that information has not been included on the MLS, we are not going to see it come in. Uh, but if you want to come in and add those adjustments yourself, there is an add adjustment button where you can add in new AC unit. So let's change what the pricing of this would be. Uh, new roof um, or it needs a new roof so let's change the pricing down a bit so whatever is going to be uh, applicable to that specific um, comparable uh, and then it's only any adjustment you make is only going to be applied to this one presentation so let's say you use number one heights boulevard for another presentation those adjustments don't carry over to that other presentation it's just the one that you you add them in here uh, add them in for this particular one. But um, if it's not coming from the MLS, we are not going to automatically add that in. Charlene had also asked, can I search for something as specific as a pool? And that's where if we're getting into those filters, I don't believe, and Don, you may, you may know off the top of your head if pools is one of those filters. If it's not, it is. Okay. It so that is. takes care of it there. But one thing to know, if you're looking, and, and like Don said, if you're looking for very hyper local type filters, your MLS search might be able to do that better for you, but you can always just grab those MLS numbers and then add those in separately with that MLS button. So we do have some limited scope for those filters, but it looks like pool is one of them. And the, another question where someone was double checking about land, this is also where you would change to land as well, is unchecking single family and checking land as you're in your filter, and then it will search for just that information. And Susan had a good question about how do you add, let's say maybe some off market properties or listings you can't necessarily find coming through the MLS. And I love That's that That's a great question. So I kind of mentioned it really quickly offhand um, under the listings column here. Let's say you have an off market or you have a for sale by owner or some other type of property that we're not gonna get through the, the MLS feed. There is this add custom listing button in the right hand side of your page, uh, which will, simply open up a screen that looks very much like your subject property screen, you would enter in all the details for that listing. The only caveat to that, the only thing I want you to know is that when you do that, because it's not tied to the MLS, it didn't come over automatically from the MLS, any update to that particular listing, you would need to go in and manually change. Uh, so I would use it for solds, things that are not going to change um, that you wanna make sure are included, but not necessarily for kind of like an active off market listing, if you will. Um, but just know that if something changes with this listing that you've put in custom, you need to go in and make the adjustments to it. Whereas if you select it from the search screen or you add it into the search screen, it will stay connected to the MLS. That's a great question. And then Ron asked, if you're presenting this live, let's say in person, do you necessarily have to have um, an actual, let's say a Wi-Fi connection or be connected to the internet? And I'll let you speak on this a little bit too, Don, but my what I would recommend is if maybe you know you're going into an area that doesn't have service like that, if you were to just essentially download that presentation before you go into that meeting, you can still just go through it in that web live version there. Um, but if you're looking to make any live adjustments and have that be updated, that's where you would need that internet connection. And then if Don didn't go over it, you can always print this as well if you know that you're gonna go into an area, maybe don't wanna show it up through the uh, live web version that you can always either download this as a PDF too or print it out additionally. Yeah, so what Cody's mentioning as far as uh, the idea of downloading is to actually view your presentation and any of the pieces that you're going to show to your person when there's no data, make sure that you have scrolled to that page and let it load um, and scroll to the next page and let it load so that that's available to you in your live presentation with your person. But the other thing is I would suggest, because we don't want to be asking our customers for their Wi-Fi password to be able to, to show off the presentation, is to make sure that you know how to set your own mobile device as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So if you do have the option for data in a location, to use your own uh, materials, your own uh, data sources for using that as a hotspot so that you can still showcase this. Uh, downloading it and loading the pages or opening up the presentation and loading the pages, you'd wanna use in an area where you would have no opportunity for a signal at all, um, and then still be able to showcase this to your person. Those are my two cents on that. <laughs> yeah, that's great, I love it. And then um, Diane had asked, is the buyer tour presentation mobile friendly? Can clients easily follow along on their phones as you're going through the buyer tour? And 
yeah, that's the whole point. Another reason why um, the question hasn't been asked specifically, but we don't necessarily have a, an app because everything that we create is mobile friendly or friendly for iPads, what have you, your client can easily navigate your presentation on any device they're on. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we want to, especially with the buyer tour, we want to make sure that people don't feel like they have to bring along the paper and pen, that they can just have their mobile device, their phone, which we all have on us all the time, uh, and be able to just type in those reviews and look at the information right from their phone. And then the last one, at least that's relevant to present, we did have one come in from Kathy, and that looks like it's about adding people into Engage that might be outside of adding them to your Gmail, which Kathy, I'm, I'll address that separately with you. But for the last question on present, Santos had asked, is there a login password or some sort of an account setup that your client has to go through before they can access your presentation? Um, and the answer to it is, is essentially no, as a, any of the presentations can be opened up. John, you might have additional information though on that buyer tour and how the um, email address is validated and verified. Yeah, so anybody can look at your presentations. Also, your presentations will never go away unless you delete them yourself. So as, as long as you have uh, sent out a link to someone, anybody can look at that link. So your friends, your customers can share it with their friends and family, and they would be able to look at it. The only one that we have added in a request to verify an email address is on that buyer tour if, peop if people want to leave a rating and review. So we want you to know as the agent who is going to be leaving reviews. So you have the control over who you would send that to and who would have access to leave information on your, um, on your presentation. And the idea behind that is we don't want um, hundreds of people coming in and leaving uh, remarks or reviews on something when you're trying to focus on helping your customer. So even if your customer then sends off that link to somebody else, they won't be able to leave a review. Only the person that you have sent it to will do that. So that's why that um, check is there. But for the majority, uh, anybody who gets the link to the presentation can open and view that presentation without any kind of block or sign-in procedure. And that, that's all we have for questions, Don. A um, couple of things that I wanted to highlight since we didn't do it at the beginning, which we normally do, since we're using benchmark Zoom, you guys have already recorded this, so I'm sure leadership can let you know about getting access to this video once it's done. But I do just want to remind you a couple things. We are going to be turning on um, the access to Moxie Present for you guys at around noon central time. And you should be getting an email around that time as well. That should allow you to go in there and play around. One last question that Jerry had thrown in. Can you post a presentation to social media? And I think that's really important to go over real quick because I think that's a no-brainer what you should do with any of the presentations you're making yes. is, is put them on social media. Absolutely, 100%. So uh, again, I'll, I'll kind of go back to that one story about the agent who created a presentation about his local microbreweries in a neighborhood. That's all he did. He created the presentation. He then grabbed the URL that's up here at the top, posted that to social media uh, across all his social medias and had the most interaction of any presentation he'd ever done or any other marketing he'd ever done. So it is definitely a, a really great way to connect with your, your sphere and your broader group when you might be prospecting or looking for leads um, to go ahead and create a presentation that you post to your social media and be able to interact with your people that way. So all you have to do is grab the URL. Um, make sure you do grab the URL for the cover page because it does change. You'll, you'll notice there's a little hashtag cover here. Um, go ahead and copy that and you can post that URL to your present or to your socials. And, um, and then this will be the page they land on. If you page, if you share, let's say this page, uh, this will be the page that they land on when they go to open it. So just kind of keep that in mind. Always do it from the first page. Um, but yes, definitely post it to your social media. Good question, Jerry. Yep. And so I'm not sure, um, Philip, on your end, if, if you want to take over here to close yeah, us out here. As far as Don and I go, though, um, we're good to go on our end. Just wanted to emphasize one last thing. That is, you agents will probably have questions. Just want to reinforce that help button down there. Uh, my support team is ready to go. If you guys have questions, I've already let them know that we're launching you guys today. So feel free to either email them, support at MoxieWorks, um, or you can get in touch via a live chat, or you can always schedule an appointment. So that was kind of the last thing I had on my end here, Philip. 
Yeah, just make me the host again. Uh, Don, stop sharing your screen. Make me the host. There we are. Okay. Um, I think we're good. Anyway, um, I appreciate uh, everybody attending today. We, as, as Cody said, we will have this posted within a few hours on the recording of it, posted on the uh, agent resources section. And then we will also have uh, the slides that I put up with the numbers, or at least my slides uh, from the numbers, and we will have that posted on there as well. Uh, engage with Engage, Engage with Moxie. There we are. Hi. <laughs> Uh, and we will have a, have a good time. And the question was asked about how many people actually have uh, participated. Uh, we're running at a, at a little over a 20% uh, participation right now. Uh, we're hoping to push that up to about a 50% participation. We will be having ongoing training classes here as well, as, and we're going to do some online also. Uh, so you don't have to just watch this video and then be lost. We'll have those training classes that'll be live with Tammy Margulies and she will be able to answer your questions, but feel free to use the help button, watch the videos. And then there are also, uh, 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 you have the opportunity on that help button to set up a callback. There's no way to actually call Moxie support, but you can set up an appointment for them to call you. And then you can walk through it page by page if we need to. So with that said, I appreciate everyone's attendance. Cody and Don, thank you so much for your intelligent database and delivery today. We appreciate it. And remember, we're always here to help you. So be better, be benchmarked.